Today is September 24th, 2012, and we are interviewing Francis Relta at the Illinois State Library. Um, Francis is 88 years old, having been born on July 20th, 1924. My name is Regina Corthals, and I'll be the interviewer. Francis, could you state for the recording what war and which branch of service you served in? I was World War II in the U.S. Navy wave and um, served from uh, October of 44 to February of 47. And what was your rank? Uh, Special sex, first class. And where did you primarily serve? Uh, well, my, uh, my rank that I got was mostly in my first year. And the story is that I worked in a naval powder factory and we x-rayed explosives for defects. And I did that, that for a year. Plus, we also developed the film. One week we'd work behind the x-ray machine and one week we would work in the dark room. And every one of uh, the people that I worked with in groups were promoted. In one year, we've got six promotions, which doesn't happen unless you have a hazardous job. We were surrounded three ways by the Potomac River and then fenced in and guarded by a Marine. There was a small Marine base, and then there were sailors and waves. And, uh, um, we were not to tell what we did until after the war or where we were, well, parents knew, but I mean, we were not to talk about it. But it was a, a hazardous job and that's why we got the promotions we did. Um, most, you have, most people, you have to wait at least six months for one promotion. So I went from uh, getting out of boot camp, it's AC, a seaman third class, second class, seaman first class, and then a special sex third class, second class, and first class. Is this, um, did you choose this station or was it chosen for no, you? No, actually, I, I was disappointed that I was sent there. It wasn't something, but I was sent there, so I did the job. And I, I, I've, I've had problems. I'm, I'm sure that in those days, we weren't, um, they weren't as careful about shielding us from this x-ray because I've always had trouble with my throat. And, um, and I still do, but it's a job that I had, that they sent me to, so I did it. Did you see any combat? while you were in no, the they didn't waves in that time did not <laughs> unless you were meant fending off sailors well i thought it was probably <laughs> not gonna that. count you know it probably was not <laughs> applicable but you never know if you were off somewhere and you know no so you know they weren't we weren't allowed to board ships or anything that was uh, we were land only okay um, were you awarded any medals or citations? Yeah, well, I got the medal like everybody gets that medal there. I don't, it's a World War and then a, an, another medal, but that this picture would have been showed it. This is what the medal Yeah, that's was. a better picture. Okay. So these are some kind of personal questions here. Um, how did you get along with the officers and federal uh, fellow soldiers? Uh, I'm one of these people that just go with the flow. I, I don't uh, make any waves. I just, uh, if I liked it or I didn't like it, I just let it go, you know. So I did get along okay. And I think, uh, like you say, attitude is important and that's what it is. Okay. Did you feel any pressure, stress, or anxiety in your job? Were you worried some well, days that that you, was... You know, when you're young, you don't. Okay. And I didn't even think about it being uh, um, dangerous or anything because, you know, somebody could have come up the river and 
uh, any kind of an explosion, the whole thing would go up. But um, didn't think about that then. I do. Yeah, when you got older, how old would you say you probably were when you thought like that's crazy? That if I were was, asking yeah, you that, that today, I wouldn't well, do it. Probably in my after I got married and had children, probably in my forties, maybe fifties. Hmm. Did you keep a personal diary of your time there? Uh, I did for a while, but it was. You know, it was just uh, Monday and things about we had to get up at a certain time and get over to drill and then bre breakfast when we were in boot camp and how cold it was because they had a reservoir there at Hunter College and the wind would come across that reservoir and we'd be marching and freezing at the same time. <laughs> but that was it. Not, not what you call did you have um, Did you have to keep your hair short or long? Yeah, we there was had no to, makeup. Was were, what were the rules for women? Had to be above uh, uh, the collar, off the collar, and I wore mine up. I had it long, but I wore it up. And um, uh, makeup, not a lot of makeup. You know, it's just okay. Um, can you tell me about a couple of your most memorable experiences? Well, Truman, not Truman, Roosevelt, when we graduated, they had a huge um, building. I, I don't know what you'd call it. It's like out at the fairground where they have the horses. Huge. And we were on uh, graduating, and Tr not Truman, Roosevelt came in his car, and they brought him up uh, like it had a drive in the middle of the... And uh, he talked with us, and then he left. And then I was also in Washington, D.C. when he died uh, at the procession, but nothing really exciting. It was just a job, you know, like you did here, but away from home, which I had never been, so. Well, that was the next question. Were you able to stay in touch with your family? Oh, yeah. Just not give a lot of specifics of what. No, actually, it didn't do much calling in those days. It was writing letters, and every so often we did get the call. Hmm. Did you have or have anything that you carried special for good luck, like good luck charm, or anything my, you kind of carry now from then? That yeah, you know, my mother had given me, and I changed purses, or I would have had it in there. It was a cross in a little little leather that I carried all the time with me. And my husband gave me this years ago. That I, that's the only thing I wear too, it's the cross. Did you have plenty of supplies where you were at? Yeah, well, we lived probably better than the civilians did. They were on ration, but... Yeah, the next question is, what was the food like? Very good. Do you have, where did you guys eat? In a regular, I, where, I, I'm not I, understanding. You know, I think it's uh, the. You know, I think it's just like when you you cooked and made one day. Maybe we'd have hamburgers and mashed potatoes and gravy and and for breakfast. You were in was, a barrack setting still. Well, we were in a barracks, but our our. Uh, in fact, I have those passes too. We had to. Um, our barracks was not on that closed in area, it was like two blocks away and the bus used to take us so in there t to eat in the dining room, we had to have a pass to get in. But it was um, just like, you. I, I think they, as far as food was concerned, we probably had the best. And the uh, civilians were doing the ra a lot of the rationing, but. Uh, okay. Um, this is uh, now rest and relaxation. So um, how did you entertain yourself when you weren't working? Uh, it, it, actually, I I was one of those people that, uh, you know, I came from a strict Italian family, and I always traveled in groups. I never <laughs> traveled much alone. Uh, I think because, uh, I, because of not having the been experienced to a lot of things. I thought I was safer in groups than in individual. But anyway, I 
um, you had, we had a U.S. soul on our base, and there was movies. We also had a swimming pool, and uh, they had a golf course there. This was a really nice base. It wasn't a big base, but it was a nice base. Were there it was any... um, uh, one road led into D.C., uh, uh, 32 miles, in, in Indian Head, Maryland. And now I, I've never been back, but they say it's quite a more of an um, exclusive uh, resort area. Hmm. And the president, well, uh, we had like a beach area, but it wasn't very clean. But the president's uh, boat, uh, Roosevelt, the boat, his boat came by and, and stopped at our landing there. And we got to see the president's boat. Well, a ship, I guess, but it's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, were there any entertainers that came to see your units? Not really, but the bus used to take us into D.C. to different, uh, uh, the bus would go in to about three nights a week that you could go in, and they had different entertainers there, and they'd give us uh, tickets to the theater to see the different entertainment. And are those the kind of things, what did you do on leave, those kind of things? Did yeah. you ever do... A special trip on a leave for a yeah, I would, time? Yeah, well, we used to have uh, be able to fly on uh, Army planes or Navy planes for free. It, and so a friend of mine, her family lived in McAllen, Texas, which is down on the border. And we took a plane that went to Tampa, Florida, and then we... Uh, we had like five days, and then we took another plane that went from Tampa, Florida, to, um, um, oh dear, it's a town in Texas that's, um, oh dear, well, I can't think of the name of the town. Anyway, after that, we had to take a bus to McAllen, Texas, and we were the only two white females. <laughs> On the bus, they were all Mexicans, and by the time we got to her brother's, that took us two days, so we had maybe a day and a half or so to visit with him and um, find our transportation back to to get back in time, you know. Yeah. Um, do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events that happened? Well... I stood up for a couple of girls' weddings mm -hmm. there on the base, and I still have pictures of that. Nothing special. I mean, this was a smaller base, and like I say, most of the entertainment was, uh, although we did have a USO there, uh, you went into Washington, and Washington was so crowded then, you had to stand in line for everything. Uh, but that, that's nothing really special. I know that they took us uh, on a Chesapeake Bay on a boat ride for a day. A bus took us there and we went. And that was interesting because I'd never been much on boats and I did enjoy that. But nothing really outstanding to talk about. Hmm. Um, were there any pranks pulled on people that you saw that you thought were particularly funny? Or did you ever pull any prank? <laughs> uh, not really. I can't think of anything special. Okay. Silly things maybe, but nothing special. Well, you had showed us this picture. I said, did you bring any picture or photos you'd like to share and tell us about? You had showed us your medal picture. Did you want to show the other pictures of like you and your sister and, and of the Jefferson yeah, Memorial? Yeah, one here. Yeah, that, that was all. These were in the newspaper okay. after it. This was the, And the backstory of that picture is? This is when I got out of boot camp. I went to, my uh, boot camp was spent in Hunter College in the Bronx in New York. And my sister came up and took me to, when I graduated, to uh, Jack Dempsey's, which was a famous res restaurant there in New York. And we had dinner. 
So that's you and your sister in that picture? Yes. And she was in the Navy also? Yeah, she was uh, in, she's four years older than me, and she was in two years before I went in. Okay. And she got out about a year before I did. What was, what did she do in the Navy? She worked in the Navy Department, and she, uh, uh, as a secretary, you know, taking, like, something maybe it was, but uh, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. was in that office that she oh. worked in. <laughs> okay. So yeah. did you end up outranking her by the time everything yeah, was did. done? Because you got the fast yeah. track. Yeah, she, she, she came out um, uh, third class specialist, and I ended up first class, mm -hmm. but only because of... Like I say, the job was dangerous, and everybody in our group got it. It wasn't just me, it was the group. Sure. And this was the Jefferson Memorial, and what, why did you have this picture? Well, it was just down from where we lived. Oh, we so were, you got to see we that. We were in West Potomac Park, and our barracks were there, and right behind the Navy Department, and um, a block down from Lincoln Memorial. Uh, well, Lincoln Memorial was a block above us, and this was a couple blocks, and the cherry blossoms were there along that area, and it was just something. Did you take this picture? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. picture. I took a photography class when I was in, uh, in the Navy, too. That was one of the things I did that I enjoyed doing. I wanted to, oh, here are the, here's, here are the, these, this is like, this was a ID, ID card, and this was, uh, this was just an ID card. This was seven, right after I got out of the service. And then this was like the mess card. And, the, and this this one here was a, just getting in and out of our building. And uh, you can have any of these you want. These were address changes that we had to send to our parents. Oh, so when and they wanted to write so you. So they know where to write. Yeah. Interesting. But, yeah. So these are um, discharge and post-war questions. And mm -hmm. I'll just kind of give you a few of them if you want to tell us a, a kind of a okay. elaborate all right. On things a little bit. Um, do you recall the day your service ended? Yes. Uh, where you were? Um, and they kind of want, you know, did your work come to an end or had you fulfilled your military service? And were others discharged with you? Well, I debated rather to stay in or come out because we our, our service was uh, six months. If, we had to stay in until six months after the war ended. And in 45, when it ended, and we were in Indian Head, uh, I was transferred to Washington, D.C., and then I was a telephone operator there at West Potomac Park. And um, that um, my time came up, and I had to decide whether I wanted to sign up again or, or decide to leave. Well. I was 23 years old, and I thought to myself, I did this, and I thought it was time to go home. I, and a and good thing, because then I met my husband soon after that. <laughs> but I did, um, I did the job that I had to do, and the war was over, and I think I felt that, you know, that was an end to it for me. What did you do in the days and weeks afterwards? Did you resume a job or start a new career? Did you go back to school? You know what, I, I went to Brown's Business College um, oh, about two weeks after I got back. And that was in the daytime. And then I we lived only two blocks from Sangle Electric. And I went over there and I got a job from three to 11 or whatever that, uh, that afternoon shift, and I worked there, and at Sangamo, you know, they had a lot of uh, Navy contracts, and 
they'd hire people and then they'd lay them off. That was how that went. So when I got laid off, I went to the, I took two civil service tests. One was for computer, no, not computer, uh, key punching, and the other was for a contometer. And I just figured whatever one came up first, I would take that job. Well, it came up key punching. And that was what I... I don't did. know what a cantometer is. You know, is. a cantometer is <laughs> more like something on, on the way of an adding machine. Oh, okay. But that, it's uh, more like a bookkeeping okay. deal. But um, the key punch courses, when IBM started, we were... Uh, things were all in code like that, and they punched holes in the... And uh, I worked for State Police Merit Board and uh, doing that. And uh, then I worked for public aid doing that. And uh, I worked for the state for about um, probably 13 years. And uh, I wasn't able to have children, so we adopted two. I had a daughter. She was three days old, and we brought her home. Two years later, I got a little boy, and he was four days old when I brought him home. And I'm not sure if that's connected with my being exposed to all that radiation, because I think my throat had, you know, they didn't take the precautions like they did now. I mean, you had a screen in front of you, but I think we were, we were all exposed to that. Yeah, so... Um do you keep in contact with any of those? Yeah, I used to keep in contact with at least six girls, and now I'm down to two. The others Did, were they able to have children and uh, things like that? No, in fact, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, two of the girls that I know adopted children, oh. and but I I don't there. And one never married, and I don't think she had children, I don't know. You know, after we left the service, we'd write maybe once or twice a year, and they'd catch up on details you don't, you or don't stuff. You don't have reunions or anything where you all get together? Pardon? There are no reunions where you all get no, together? No, I never, they, they were, at first they were having them, but I never got to go to any of those, but. And you've not been back to Washington, D.C.? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say. I w I've been back twice. I went back about uh, 20 years ago. I was bowling in uh, uh, the International had Bowling Tournament was in Baltimore, and we rented a car and went to uh, Washington to see but most of the buildings that, you know, temporary buildings were all gone. But um, that, um, uh, it, 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 you know, it was still the same, the Washington Monument and all that, but then it wasn't, uh, didn't look the same after the buildings were all tore down. But. Yeah, had you seen a lot of Washington, D.C. when you were working there? When you yeah. were stationed oh, there, because yeah. we got could to see walk, pretty walk, much everything walk there around there. Yeah, so most of it, I was I, I took pictures from the top of the Washington Monument, but now it's so crowded. You know, when I was there, you could look across at um, at um, the cemetery there. I'm trying to think Arlington of Arlington National, because uh, we were on this side of the river and there. And that was all just clear. You could see the the entrance and everything. Now they've got hotels and built up all around there. I mean, it's uh, hard even, but it was pretty then. I think I don't. I like, like the it. history of Arlington. I don't National like Cemetery. it now, but uh, well, that's why I'm I'm wondering. I'd like to see the view of this today, just to see how much the um, greenery. This is can. pretty. The, the the monument like Lincoln Memorial more, and to Jefferson. I'm wondering like the maturity of the trees yeah. and different things in your background now mm -hmm. of how how the well, scenery of that has the changed. cherry blossoms were this way along the Potomac River, and this was sort of um, well yeah we went along this way, 
to West Potomac Park was down this way, and that was sort of like an, uh, and then when you went up this way a little bit more was Lincoln, Lincoln's tomb, and that bridge went over across to Arlington, to Arlington Cemetery. But no, it's really crowded now. I, d I didn't like it now compared to what it was then. I mean, as far as the scenery was concerned. Yeah, so what did you think about seeing like the Lincoln Memorial being from Springfield, where we have all of the yeah. actual, you know, birthplace, uh, or not necessarily birthplace, I, but you know what I mean. I, I, was on the, I went on the honor flight uh, the year before last. My sister and I were the only two women veterans on that flight, and <laughs> they interviewed the fellows, but they, they just ignored us. Mm. I mean, and not because we wanted to be out there, it's just a, I thought that was a good story. Yeah. So, Did you have a sense of pride that, at the link, seeing the Lincoln Memorial? Again, yeah. Well, when but, just but seeing it, it initially, oh, having been from Springfield, did you, you know, well, feel you know, proud to have that? Thing? I had never done any traveling. I mean, it was, uh, I was uh, 20 years old and uh, brought up, to, uh, you know, strict Italian family that afraid to make a move. So, but I mean, I, I don't know. I, and I it was awesome. It was just something that, and but it was prettier then. I mean, it wasn't all these buildings around it, and the, you could see the Potomac, uh, uh, like that big hotel where where our president got caught in the scandal. Yeah. That wasn't there. You could the water game, okay. you could see. Uh, the water, you know, and sometime at night they'd have concerts, and there was a, a like a um, seats built up on a hill, and there were concerts right on the Potomac River, you know, right right there by the bridge, and uh, but now it's just overflowing. I mean, it's everything's just poor. I I I thought it was beautiful then. Okay. Um, did you join a veterans organization? I, I, went, I was in the reserve for two years after I, until 49. Okay. Um, so how has your service and experiences affected your life? Well, I tell you, I grew up fast. I, you know, the, the first thing that um, uh, I came from an overprotective family. First thing they showed us in boot camp were these films of different diseases that you could get. That scared me to death. I hadn't, didn't know anything about any of that, you know? And um, it was just an experience where I grew up. I mean, and yet I'm the luckiest, naive and, and dumb, really that I got through, got through all that, but, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it was something I did like, it was, I was on my own, I could make my own decisions, and most of them, you know, of course, there were harder, you had to, we had curfew, we had to be in at, uh, uh, by 11 o'clock, unless we had, went somewhere and they gave you special permission. So it, it was um, confinement too. I mean, like you would be at home. Parents say, don't do this. Well, we couldn't do it there either. You know, you couldn't get out after a certain time. Uh, I'm rambling. I should oh, stop. no, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> we, we've got time. Um, so did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military in general? Yes, I think a lot about that because I went to Walter Mead Hospital uh, there near the end uh, and volunteered before I got out of service. And I was so taken back with the injuries that you saw there. You And I was really sensitive and I just couldn't take it. It just, I only did it two or three times and I was, that was the end. These, these boys lost everything. The, the, the arms, legs went blind. You know, they're the ones that gave up everything for this country. 
Well, I think you did too, in a sense, just not knowingly, you know, yeah. that that is interesting with the, you know, your x-ray story and, you know, fertility issues or whatever. Um, I just think that's interesting. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Any other? Pardon? Is there anything else you'd like to add? Any other stories or uh, feelings I, I, about I, anything? I, myself, I think a lot of wars... That war, we, we had no choice. We went to it because we were attacked. But there's a lot of wars that were unnecessary. I mean, we came out of Vietnam with nothing. The French were there for 20 years and they left. But America thought they were going to solve the problems of the world. But uh, Korea, another war that was never won, and you can't say it was won. Um, I just think wars sometimes are too much. I mean, people are unhappy all over the world. Look what's going on with our world. I mean, uh, you, you have to make the best of what you got a lot of times. And my parents raised nine kids, and my father was a coal miner. You know, it, it, if it wasn't for a garden in the summertime, uh, that my mother canned all this stuff that we ate off of uh, uh, most of the winter. Uh, we'd get meat maybe once a week or if something was on sale. My mother made her own bread. I mean, now I think people are expecting more than what they can get. I mean, they want more and more. And we've done that to because we've done it to our children. and. Our children are doing it to their children. Yeah, we we have more than we need. Yeah, and we feel like we need to give them more than we what we right. had. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, you had nine siblings or nine with yourself? My, my there were nine of nine children. So, how many went to the service? There were. I had two brothers in the army, and my sister and I were in the navy. Okay. Mm -hmm. All, was it all during World War II? Uh -huh. So I have a brother. There's only three of us living. My brother's 94 that was in the Army, and my other brother's gone. And my sister, Rose, who is here, is 92, and uh, and I just turned 88. Yeah. So your brother that's 94, uh, did he travel and got to go to a you lot know, of places? You know, I, I was the only one that got that invitation, and I talk with my sister into coming. And I did call my brother because uh, Cheryl said uh, it would be nice to talk to all three of them. He mm -hmm. just, he didn't, um, he got the Purple Heart. He was a, a Army corpsman, but he didn't want to talk about it, so. Oh. Was he, he stationed uh, in Europe or? No, he was in uh, uh, his, uh, in uh, uh, New New Guinea, I think it was, oh, on one of the islands where they were bringing back a lot of the injured. And, but he was out in because he, he did get a Purple Heart. He got shot in the leg or buttocks or something. Uh, but no, he didn't want to talk about it. So was your mother and father, I mean, okay with all these kids gone? and Not really. Um, yeah. My fa I was the youngest, and my father, I, well, I have to tell you the story about that. I worked downtown. I had gotten out of high school, and I worked downtown at Herndon's. And I used to go by the Navy recruiting station every day. And then my sister had been in, and I thought, gee, that would, I wish I, I could go in. And uh, I had to be 20, and I wasn't quite 20 yet. And uh, after I... Because uh, my papers say my enlistment says 0721, which was the day after my birthday. I went down, and while well, this is given away, I, I went in and um, they gave me papers, and I said, uh, read them, and I said, I just made up my mind I was going to do it, but I knew my parents wouldn't sign, so <laughs> I signed their name. And uh, the night before my picture was going to be in the paper that I 
had enlisted with a few others, you know, I had to tell my parents and my father said, no, I'm going to go down and you're not going. And I just all night long, I kept saying, oh, please just let me go. I'll be okay. Everything will be okay. My other sister was four years older than me, so but it, he just didn't want me to go. And finally, I talked him into it. And the day that I left for the station was four o'clock in the morning and uh, took a cab and he had to come with me. And I'll remember this for the rest of my life because he stood on, on Third Street there waving at me as far as I could see. He was still standing there waving. And I'll always, that picture will always stay with me. But I'm not sure. I, I wanted to go in because we were so strict with everything. I, I, I thought it was time for me to grow up. And, and, but I did like the idea of the being Navy. I don't know why. I just like the idea of going in and doing what I was had to do. That's why when I was told where my station was at, I wasn't really happy about that. But that's where they sent me, so that's where I went. Were your parents upset that you then, the, this child that was their baby that they did not want to go in the first place, then ended up with such a dangerous they, you know, occupation there? Were they upset? Or did they not really understand how dangerous that well, was? Well, I, I, they didn't know because we weren't allowed to Oh, you weren't to even tell. allowed to say what you were doing. No, they okay. didn't know. Oh, my. So when you got out and you told them what you did, they... Yeah. Were they or like, Actually, oh uh, I never even talked about this until maybe uh, 10 years ago. Uh, uh, my husband was uh, in the Surat Navy, too, but that's another story, and you probably don't... He was a baseball player, and he played uh, uh, minor leagues for about seven years, and Philadelphia Athletics had signed him up for spring training, and he was, he was there, and he got his notice to, so he chose the Navy, too, and he was on a LST, a, well, flat bottom boat, I'm not sure which one that was, but from San Francisco to Hawaii, and they had a four-day layover, so because they were on their way to the Solomon Islands, and he had a four-day layover, so he got on the bus to saw a ball game going on and got off and met uh, three people that he played baseball with that were in the big leagues, and then the only one I can recall now is Barney Mikowski, who was with Detroit Tigers at the time, and all the big league baseball players were there. Like it was an R and R camp for they call it rest and recuperation. A lot of the injuries came back, and uh, this was their entertainment. They had tennis players there. Uh, they had baseball, football players, fighters, um, and they entertained the troops. Uh, and so they'll. People say to him, and he played, but he was on this boat, and the, 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 this Barney said, I'm going to get you off because we need a pitcher. Pat had, had a good, uh, uh, well, anyway, he, he hurt his arm when he was only about second year playing baseball, and he developed a sidearm, and he had a sinker that nobody could hit. Mm -hmm. So he, um, they were. He, the Barney said, we need a pitcher. We're going to get you off that boat. And Pat said, oh, great. And so he said, when he went back, the commander said, well, you have to have a replacement. And Pat said, well, I don't know who, who what. And so he called Barney, and Barney said, they'd find somebody. At the last minute, there was no replacements. And but the commander told my husband, get off. He was all packed and everything, so he got off. And you got to play baseball then. Mm. It's hot in here. Mm. Well, I appreciate you coming and telling us all your stories today, Francis. Yeah. Well, 
that's just a plain old story. But no, 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 they're all interesting to listen to. Anyway, I don't know if you want to keep any of those things. You're yep. welcome. And, and they, they like to share right. things. Okay. Thank you.